Welcome back to the second part of the hair tutorial. In this video, we're going to explore hair dynamics in different circumstances. Let's start recreating this donut. First, I'm going to get rid of my existing hair, set my timeline to zero frames, and also going to disable the render view and hide it for now. I'm going to create a new TARS. Just going to go to the objects, click TARS. Let's hide my existing TARS. Adjust the rotation and scale. And now we can press Shift C and go add hair. Let's see what happens when we press play. Yeah, they're just falling down. Interesting thing that we can do here is select the TARS object, then press Shift C and look for vibrate tag. After applying a vibrate tag, I'm going to enable rotation and set the amplitude to 90, 30 and around maybe 90 again. And if we'll press play now, we should see that our donut is going crazy. So let's decrease the frequency to 0.5. And now we can see that he became a, quite a bit smoother. 360, 120, 120, and maybe frequency like 0.3. And this is exactly what we had before. We can turn on both of them and you can see they're almost identical. So in case we have like two Tauruses and they are driven by the same vibrato tag, you can just simply change the seed and they're going to do a totally different thing. Okay, now let's adjust our hair guides. Let's go to the guides and change the root from polygon vertex to polygon area. Let's increase the length a bit and also we can increase the segments to 16. It's just going to give our hair guides a bit more flexibility. As you can see, now it's kind of more messier. We can also adjust the gravity by going into the hair object and a forces tag. As a default, gravity is set to minus 9.8. We can set it to zero and let's see what happens. Pretty interesting effects. You can play around with gravity as much as you want. In case I need my hair to hold on its own roots a slightly tighter, we're just going to go to the dynamics tag and then open up properties. And here I can go for a rest mix for a lot like 15 and rest hold 15% as well. And let's see what it does. As you can see, now the hair has a stiffness to it. Now what we're seeing is that hair is trying to keep his original posture by 15%. In this case, I would recommend to keep this option as low as possible. So if we are happy with what we have, we need to cache our simulation. To do this, we need to go to the hair object, switch to the cache tab, and then click calculate. If you notice, I have my frames on minus 30, but I start my player from a zero frame. And why I did that? So let me empty my cage here and set this to zero frames. And we will calculate this again as you can see, now we can see the moment when the hair guides are falling down. In order to not to see them, I'm trying to go like around 30 frames on my timeline and then calculate it again. If I'll adjust my preview timeline to zero frames and press play, I'm going to see my donut already into the action, which is pretty good. Let's fire up Redshift in order to apply hair material to this. We're going to use material from our previous scene. I must say this is already looking pretty beautiful. Caching the simulations will allow you to smoothly scrub through your timeline and also pick the frame maybe you want to concentrate on. So here we have a material from a previous tutorial. The only thing that is different is the color. So I'm just going to replace the new material that came with hair. And let's take a look. Instantly, it's going to look like this. We can go to our gradient, go with different one. And we're going to get totally different look on this one. Oh, I like this one more, actually. <laughs> Why didn't I do this one? You can get really interesting results with just the hair material. In order to calculate hair to hair collision, we need to go back to our hair object and go to forces and check hair to hair. But after this, we need to catch this again. And that's how you create a crazy donut. And now let's create this dynamic grass. Let's go ahead and disable my actual grass here. And I'm going to create a plane. Press C to make it editable. 
And now let's go to polygon mode and Ctrl A to select all the polygons. Let's press M and T. We're just going to extrude this tiny bit. Now let's go Shift C and add hair. Change back to polygon mode and let me reposition this real quick. I'm also going to disable this from render and project views. So before I press play, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust my count. I'm going to set my count to 100 and also change it to polygon area. Let's increase the height quite a bit, around 260. And now we can move on to our dynamic tab and change our rest hold to 25%. Let's calculate and let's see what it looks like. It's exactly what we want it to be. Let's fire up Redshift. To replace the material, we're just going to hold down the Alt key and drag and drop this material over here. This is the same material with this kind of gradient on it. This is our fluffy grass. As you can see, some of the guys, they're going through our floor. In order to avoid this, I'm going to create another plane. I'm going to scale this up a bit and adjust the height just right above our plane. Shift C and add a tag Collider. But be careful, we have to choose here specifically Hair Collider. And also, we need to hide this one. Now I'm going to empty my cache and calculate it again. And yes, as you can see, now we have a collision with the floor. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it's definitely going to look way better if you don't see some random guys are going through the floor. So here we have a Mixamo character with a hair object on it. And also our grass from a previous project. What I want you to take a look at is the whole setup and how easy it is to actually do it. There's a tutorial available on my Patreon and it's super easy to follow. So be sure to check that out. And that's a wrap on today's tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. You can also follow me on Instagram and become a Patreon for more advanced tutorials. Once again, thank you for watching. This is Sandro and I'll see you next time.